Unit 7, Quadratic Equations, Lesson 3, Solving Quadratic Equations by Reasoning. In the past, we have thought about quadratics in terms of a situation. In this lesson, we are going to start thinking more abstractly. We are going to use reasoning, our common sense, and perseverance to figure out some solutions. Let's start by evaluating 4 times 4 and negative 4 times negative 4. What do each of those products result in? You are right if you said 16 to both of those. There are two ways to square a number and get a positive 16, either by multiplying 4 times 4 or by multiplying negative 4 times negative 4. Let's keep that in mind as we move forward. In lesson 3, in the lesson three warm-up, we are asked, how many solutions does each question have? What are the solutions? Be prepared to explain how you know. I'd like you to pause the video and give yourself enough time to try each of these before you continue. You may get stuck and that's okay. Try your best to persevere and use your reasoning. We will go over some thinking when you hit the play button again. So hit pause now. All right. You should have already tried the problems. If you haven't, hit pause. All right, so x squared equals nine. How many different values of x can we square to get nine? You may have thought of three, but did you also remember that negative three squared will give you nine? If you did, great job. So problem one has two solutions, x equals three and x equals negative three. Problem two says x squared equals zero. It's a little different because zero is the only number that will fit. Problem number three, oh, uh, so zero, oh, there's no positive zero and no negative zero. There's only zero. So there's only one solution and it's x equals zero. Problem number three, we need some numbers. We need some number that when squared, we get four because I need to take one away in order to get back to three, right? So what number minus one equals three? Well, four minus one equals three, I know that. So then we think what number squared gives me four? So two squared is four and a negative two squared is four. So we have two solutions, two and negative two. Problem number four says two times x squared equals 50. And I know that two times 25 is 50. So I need some x value that when squared gives 25. So x could equal five or negative five. It's important to note that the two was not squared in this problem, only the x was squared. That may have tripped you up a bit when you tried it on your own. Number five looks different than the previous problems. Now it looks like we have something in factored form. The quantity x plus one times the quantity x plus one is equal to zero. So basically, the quantity x plus one squared is equal to zero. The only way to get zero is to make sure that one of the quantities being multiplied is zero. So I wanna know what plus one will give me zero. What cancels out a positive one? A negative one. So x equals negative one will work to make both factors equal zero. So number five only has one solution and it's x equals negative one. Problem number six is similar to five in that the product of the two things equals zero. Either x equals zero or x equals six. Each of those would make the product equal to zero. When I think what number minus six gives me zero, I think six, right? What value here would make that equal zero? And this is just zero. Zero times anything is zero. All right, problem number seven is where we need to use some perseverance. You may have asked yourself what number multiply 
What numbers multiply to give four? There are many ways, right? What two numbers multiply together to give four? Two times two is four. One times four is four. But we need to consider that x minus one and x minus one are the same number. So one and four aren't going to work. They have to be the same number since x minus one and x minus one are the same factor. So two times two works, but so does negative two times negative two. Now I need to think about what number minus one equals two. So take one away, three minus one is gonna give me two. I also need to think about what number minus one gives me negative two. In order for x minus one to equal two, x would need to be three and x needs to be negative one for the other factor. All right, so 3.2, finding pairs of solutions, each of these equations has two solutions. What are they? Explain or show your reasoning. So there are four different equations here. We're only gonna look at two, and the other two are gonna be part of your discussion. So you're gonna solve all four of them. Two you're gonna talk about in the discussion, and two we're gonna talk about together. I want you to pause your video again. Try these. Try them on your own. You've got some great instinctive skills you need to use. So hit pause, and then we'll go over them. All right, looking at this first one, we need to ask ourselves what plus four equals 404? Well, I know that 400 plus four is gonna give me 404. So now I need to think, okay, what number squared gives me 400? Something times itself gives me 400. We could have 20 times 20 or we could have negative 20 times negative 20. So this has two solutions. It told me there were two solutions. One is 20 and one is negative 20. And number three, 144 is equal to something squared. Notice they had n plus one, and I took that whole expression, that whole binomial, and replaced it with a question mark. Something squared gives me 144. Well, 12 squared gives me 144, and I don't want to forget about the negative also. If I square negative 12, it also gives me 144. Now I can replace and say, okay, if this quantity, n plus 1, has to equal 12, or it has to equal negative 12, what value of n would get me 12? What number plus 1? gives me 12? Well, 11. And what number plus one gives me negative 12? That's a little trickier. I need a bigger negative because then when I add one, I end up with negative 12. So my two solutions are 11 and negative 13. So problem two and four, you are going to do on your own and you get to pick one to write about in your discussion and explain your steps and your rationale. Um, you may use a calculator, but talk through what you did in the discussion. Then make sure you comment on a couple people's, other people's responses. All right, thank you for watching.